Previously on Jairus of All. That's the process. Here goes nothing. Whoa. This time on Jairus of All, I continue the Manus Blades from Cyberpunk 2077. Roll the montage. Not something you should try at home. Ha! <laughs> The blade and sheath parts are not completely finished yet, but I'm sick of working on them. So I'm gonna switch to something really cool. Time to make the carbon fiber base that fits on my arm. And first, I need a template to cut out the carbon fiber. Google told me that saran wrap works very well as a conforming release layer. When you're doing carbon fiber, I'm gonna wrap myself with cling wrap. Not that I'm putting the carbon fiber on yet. This is, this is for the template, but it's gonna get used for both. Safety tip scissors. This is gonna be the top layer. I need multiple layers for it to be strong and it matters which direction the threads are turned. So I'm gonna cut out a few of these, then put it together. I also used the template to cut out this piece of craft foam or pieces. I didn't have one big enough, so I stitched these together and made this. It'll give me some clearance on the inside in case I wrap it too tight. And I also want to apply foam to make it more comfortable in the future. So I'm gonna put this on with a glove and saran wrap to protect my arm from the resin. And then the carbon fiber goes on. And I'm using fast resin so that I don't have to wait forever for it to cure. I'm still gonna to have to wait an hour. So here we go. a made coat hanger mix. What you're about to watch me do is not advisable. We should all know at this point how bad it is when you put adhesive on your body that is not meant to be on your body. The carbon fiber and epoxy that I'm applying is easier to take off than spray adhesive Gorilla Glue. Don't try this at home. all wrapped up. It looks like it worked out pretty well. Obviously there's stuff that's gonna get trimmed off. Now I just gotta try to stay really still and wait for this to cure. Set time is one to two hours, fully cured in three to four. But because the uh, temperature is high in here, because it's on my arm, it should take about an hour, hopefully. I don't wanna have to stay like this all day. <laughs> What you're about to watch me do is not something you should try at home. I'm going to use a torch to get the plastic to contract. If I used a heat gun or a hairdryer for that, there's actually a higher likelihood that I would burn myself because I would have to soak far more heat into it. Even so, don't use a blowtorch on your arm. I held it in front of the heat a little bit out here and I got enough of it hard enough that I think it'll be safe to turn it off because that will hold the rest of it in shape once I get it off of my arm. And it is getting pretty stiff. And I want to take it off while it's green so that I don't get stuck in it and have to cut it off. The torch made it squish up nice. It also stuck it together so I don't have a place to start. It's been an hour and 20 minutes. Also, if you're wondering how long it's been, it drastically accelerated the cure time by holding this in your heat to allow it to cure faster. But I was totally comfortable inside it. The 
carbon frame is fully set up and it's trimmed to shape, but it's far from done. We need sanded the internal padding, put in the external frame, more carbon on top of that, so that I can attach the movement arms to it, which I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna make those out of yet. And because of that, I pulled my Patreon patrons and they gave me some really awesome feedback. If you wanna help me with projects like this in the future, like they did, then the link is in the description. You get your name on the table, access to extra content, but because of their feedback, it sparked my imagination and I came up with an entirely new way that I want to do the movement arms on this frame. Sometimes I gotta jump around when I'm building stuff. I gotta do that now, cause I'm gonna prototype something just to see if it works. I got a cheap erector set to try to prototype what I wanted to do for this. And there's too much play in it to make a slightly complex mechanical system. And I couldn't get an accurate result. But this is the original idea. I found something more accurate, Legos. And this is uh, what I used for the Iron Man system. And I was going to use this for this system because it would be easy to keep my carriage that holds the knife parallel and for everything to lay down nice. But in the game, Manus Blade does not have two arms. And if I use this, there's a lot of leverage out here on the knife blade when I hit stuff and there's a lot of impact force and that has to go somewhere. And if it doesn't go into my arm, it's gonna break something in here. And these rods can't just flex, you know, they can't both bend back because one's still gonna go into tension, one's gonna go into compression. It's gonna be difficult to do because they're separate. So it's easier if there's one bar. This is the other idea that I had that you would have a push rod between the two. And you can see in the midsection, it actually works pretty well. The knife stays basically parallel. It, it keeps the bottom in the top reasonably parallel. But once you get too far, it goes and it cams over and then the knife would be pointing straight up in the air. So that won't work. So then I was like, oh, I could just attach cables to it. Yeah, like I could run a cable from here to here next to the beam in the middle. It would be best if they were in the center. So if I ran them through eyelets in the middle, then they would just bend when this thing bends and it wouldn't matter. When you get to the extents of this, they get loose and then this thing can move around. Back to the drawing board again, which is unfortunate because now I'm at the point where I'm ready to make the mount locations on the carbon fiber arm that I made and I need to know where I want those connection points to be. And the design determines where those are. I'm gonna continue to ponder what design I wanna go with. And I'm just gonna use the two original locations that I picked to mount them at. And if I have to change it later, I'll change it later. But I have to build something else to be able to do that. jig might be overkill for the 134 grams that this weighs <laughs> currently, but it is gonna start to weigh more. I just wanted to make it as beefy as possible to make sure that this part doesn't get messed up because I would have binding in the movement systems after this. This is set up so that I can put my carbon fiber piece in and figure out where I want my swivel locations, mount locations for the movement arms to be. So I have these little 1032 rods with aluminum spacers that fit them very accurately. And then I threaded them for M6 bolts. They slide on and it makes all this stuff stay square and in relation to each other in wide open space. Now I'm just gonna make the decision on where they're going to be mounted, something like that.
There's no possible way in this video that I could convey how difficult it was to get to this point. It was a lot of time, an immense amount of work, a couple of long, long days, but it's perfectly aligned and everything is ready to go on. I can finally apply and know that it won't be messed up when I weld on my internal steel frame and the rest of the reinforcement that goes between the layers of carbon fiber. I have lots of little bits to tack together. The tensile strength of the steel is really high. It's gonna help out a lot. The issue is that uh, welding on top of carbon fiber is not a good idea. So I'm gonna weld little tacks and then cool it off. Hopefully it doesn't catch on fire too bad. The way you think it's gonna happen in your head is never the way it actually happens, at least rarely. And this was difficult. <laughs> All the metal wanted to twist and go crazy when I was welding it. On the bright side, I was able to keep it cool enough that I didn't burn this entire piece to nothing. Caught on fire a couple times, but it's nothing that really matters because it's gonna get re reinforced underneath and on top. But since I'm this far, I might as well mock up a couple of arms for this thing. That way we can get a visual of what it's gonna be like when it's done. This is super janky and made out of ultra thin aluminum flashing parts, but gives you an idea. Can't really move it around too much because this is the thinnest aluminum that I could find. Quite the reach. Ha! <laughs> There's so much more that needs to happen if you want to come along for the journey to see how the rest of this goes to turn this into the world's first truly fully functional real life Manus Blades. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, and I will see you next time for more carbon fiber and all sorts of other crazy stuff. See if I can make this actually happen. Thanks for watching. Bye.